Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bay Area Focus. I'm your host, Michelle Griego. From exciting events to beautiful murals, we have a fantastic show set up for you today. So let's get right to it. The Golden State Warriors are making their playoff run, led by the man himself, Steph Curry. Sports columnist Marcus Thompson, the second documented, uh, the second documented the surprising and unforeseen rise of Steph Curry to superstar status in his book, Golden. And he is here to give us the thrilling inside details. Perfect title there, Golden, right? Right. So you have learned a lot about Steph Curry over time. Um, what can you tell people who may not be basketball fans and have followed him? What can you tell them about the man, Steph Curry? So Steph is like a, like a circus and a carnival <laughs> all in a basketball game, okay. right? He's, he's exciting. He, he plays the game a little bit different. It's not the traditional style. Uh, we saw in game one, he had one seven-footer like spinning in a circle. Uh, he's, he's pretty fascinating. Uh, if you've ever tried to shoot a basketball or a sock into a hamper, right, or right. a ball of paper into a trash, then you can probably appreciate Steph Curry because shooting is what he does. It's really like a parlor trick. Yeah, he has so much talent. How does he do what he does? You know, I would like to think it's because, you know, of me, right? <laughs> He has, a, he has a great reporter covering him. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's a little bit of genetics. You know, his father played in the NBA and his mm -hmm. dad was a great shooter. But he's probably the hardest worker on the team. Definitely one of the hardest in the league. I mean, he's, he's, he's maniacal about practicing it. So uh, it, it's a combination of a few things. You know, he, he has the talent. He had to work at it, and because he's a little bit smaller than typical NBA players, he had to master it in order to be this good. Yeah, you almost have to work even harder, right? Right. How long have you been covering him? Since he was drafted, 2009. I started covering the Warriors in 2004, okay. so back when nobody claimed the Warriors, right? When uh, half of the Bay right. Area were Laker fans. So That was when you could easily <laughs> right? get a ticket. Right, that's when you get a ticket for easy. <laughs> so then they drafted Curry in 2009. And nobody knew it at the time, but everything changed. Uh, and it, we really didn't see it until 2012 when he became the superstar in the playoffs. But it's been a slow and steady kind of rise. And then all of a sudden, you know, we've got a book. Yeah. And what made you decide to write that book? So um, the real reason is somebody wanted to pay me to do it. <laughs> okay, that's real. <laughs> no, I get that. Uh, so we were in the middle of the, the you know, the run. They were 22-0. and 0, And... It was just, you don't really realize it until you pull back because I've seen him grow. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the larger population, Steph is brand new. You know, normally with these superstars, we knew him uh, way back when. We saw Kobe in high school. We saw LeBron in middle school, right? Right. So we've, we've seen him, you know, develop and grow up. Steph, uh, Steph was born in 2014. To, in the minds of many, right? It's like, where did this guy come from? And all of a sure. sudden, he's one of the most dominant players. So we just wanted to tell that story, how it happened, because it's so unique, and it, does, it just doesn't happen this way, that a six-foot-three guy from Davidson becomes one of the best players in the league. Yeah, and he had a lot of struggles getting to where he is right now. He's dealt with a lot. First off, you know, most of his basketball life, he's looked like a little kid dressing up as a basketball player for Halloween, <laughs> Just right? Just a bit. His jersey used to hang off of him. Really, really uh, looks so young, young face, right? Yeah. Uh, so that was always the slight. You look at him and you say, man, I know you can play, but you you look so small. You can't, you can't do this in the NBA. And then he had, like, debilitating ankle injuries. We didn't know if... Mm -hmm if he would be able to last in his career. He had the injury-prone label. Uh, one of the things I learned writing this book is that he's kind of been counted out his whole life, uh, which is odd. His dad was an NBA player, right? Mm -hmm. But all his life, he's been told, you can't do this, you can't do this. And in response to that, he's crafted this, this superstar mm -hmm. by knocking those slights down. And even today, there's, there's doubts about him, and he's out there knocking them down. Yeah, he tells them, oh, yes, I can. He doesn't even have to tell them. He just shows them. Or he just does like a triple crossover and hits a 30-footer <laughs> and then turns and to boom. the crowd, right? That, that, that's typically how he shows you he can. It's interesting because in this book, you shed light on two sources of support and bal uh, balance in his life, and that's family and faith. Absolutely. So... I didn't realize his mother was so integral to his basketball career. Like, I always thought it was, you know, Dale and, and Steph, father-son. I was ready to write the heartwarming father-son story. <laughs> but his mom 
is really, truly, like, huge in his career. Obviously, she's his mom, right? Sure. But not just in his life, but who he is, a lot of the traits that make him great, it's, it, it comes from his mom. So it really is a great mother-son story. And then his wife, Aisha, steps in, and, and she's kind of his center, his rock. That's how, he, that's how he maintains. Everybody who knows Steph says he's the most humble guy you'll ever meet, mm -hmm. which is crazy because, you know, as big as he is, he, yeah. could, he could be in there like, hey, where's my purple Skittles, right? Nobody talks to me. Right. But he's so humble and down to earth. And Aisha, that kind of family center, helps him stay that way. His entourage is Sonia, Dale, Aisha, <laughs> Riley, Ryan, his mother-in-law, like that's his entourage. The women in his life, they oh, keep yeah. him grounded, they that's keep for him sure. Grounded. Has he read the book? He said he said he's read a few chapters. I think personally he's read it all like three times, but he <laughs> but can't he say so. Tell you? Yeah. He, he doesn't want he doesn't want to stroke my ego. Did he give you any feedback? Oh yeah, he, he, he no feedback means he likes it. He likes so, it. Yeah. I haven't heard any. I haven't heard why'd you write that. I haven't heard that. Okay. But I've heard. Yeah, it's fine. It's Which fine. Which means inside, I think he's dancing. All right. I like that. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. about this book. And to get your hands on a copy of Golden, just log on to riseofstephcurry.com. Coming up after the break, a powerful message portrayed through the art of dance. We'll be right back.